start working on the business. And it's long, the more time you spend working on it, the less time you'll have, the less time you'll have to be in it. And then, and it, try to basically make it run itself. So like you have like people that you hire, you want to hire slow and fire fast. Like you don't want to make sure you, you know, you have high quality people and that, and also people that believe in the vision that you set out for the company. And that's important too. So like people who, you know, don't care, like for me, I'm a big, big, big gratitude guy. Obviously I'm a gift giving guy. So, um, and my freaking company is called appreciation advocate. <laughs> so like. So good morning and welcome to another episode of Better Business, Better Life. Today I am joined by Steve Bozogany, who is the founder and CEO of The Appreciation Advocate. Um, and Steve is based over in Philadelphia, so he's joining us from over in the US today. And he's got quite an interesting story because what he's doing right now is not what he was actually trained to do. So Steve, I'd really appreciate if you could share with our listeners how you've got to be doing what you're doing now. Oh yeah, absolutely. Thanks for having me on too, by the way, Deborah. I appreciate it. So, Pleasure. uh, when, uh, the, the way I actually got started was I was an accounting major in college and what happened is I had an internship and I didn't like it. I figured that, oh, okay, whatever. Oh, for one and then go for the second one. And then I hated the second one even more. And I said, I'm like, I can't do this for the rest of my life. I know I'm a numbers guy, but I'm not a numbers guy nine to five for 30 years of my life, uh, every day of, uh, you know, all the time. So I, I said like, all right, well, there's only one year of college left. What do I do? Like, how do I, uh, how do I come up with something to do? I like my mom still wants me to finish as an accounting major, which I did for her, but not, you know, obviously I never set foot in an accounting firm ever. Um, I probably still couldn't tell you what, what side debits and credits are on. <laughs> so <laughs> I, so I was like, so I, I went into, uh, I was like, all right, well, real estate doesn't require a whole lot of prerequisites. Let's, uh, let's get my license and go do that. So, uh, I ended up doing that and I started selling really well. I got my rookie of the year award and all those fun little things they give you when you do really well, um, mm -hmm. got the recognition. And then, uh, after a while, uh, probably reached that top, I reached that top 10% of, uh, real estate agents in the United States. And then, um, after that, that's when I, so a, a lot of real estate agents around the office actually started asking me like, Hey, what are you doing? How are you, how are you getting all of these referrals that you're doing? And I told him, I was like, Oh, well, I'm just giving them gifts. And then I follow the gift with a phone call because you know, it's a natural icebreaker. Mm -hmm. And they're like, Oh, that makes a lot of sense. And then they're like, Oh, are you wrapping the gifts and everything? I'm like, yeah, I do. And they're like, yeah, I don't have time for that. I'm like, okay. <laughs> so I kept hearing I don't have time for that. I don't have time for that. I don't have time for that. And I was like, well, there's a market there. Uh, let's do that. So then that's how appreciation advocate was born. So now I will actually build a gifting plan for people and do it for them. Uh, all they do is just pay me. And then all they have to do after they, they have to get the plan and I do it for them. They just have to follow up with a phone call and it's that easy. It's like your prospecting now is like, just, it's not, so do you want to buy a house? It's more like, Oh my God, I love you so much. Like, this is so great. Thank you for, so much for sending this. How's yeah. the real estate market? Or that's, and now that's a much easier conversation to have versus like, so do you know anyone selling? <laughs> like, <laughs> this is a totally yeah. different thing. So that's basically, uh, that's how we did it. That's how you got started. It's actually really interesting because I, I, I didn't share this with you when we were talking before, but um, when I actually first have a conversation with somebody who's interested in what I do, I actually send them out a pack and within that pack there is a there's a stuffed elephant because I talk about uncovering the elephant in the room and a bar uh, of chocolate and a book and a torch about shining the light on things with a little handwritten note. And um, as you said, like once big. you've actually sent that out, you've got the opportunity to have a conversation where there's already some kind of relationship going on and you've got something to talk about as a to just hey by the way I want to buy EOS <laughs> yeah. right yes yep. exactly yeah, yeah so. that's that's uh uh that the, the handwritten note is the most underrated item in the the business world that I think that nobody uses <laughs> I, I know handwritten notes uh from me and my gift giving studies I know uh handwritten notes are like 0.7 percent of all mail in the United States wow and it's like yeah. they get read what like a hundred percent of the time they get kept often uh yep. And it shows that you care. I mean, I don't know what else you want me to do. It doesn't cost anything. It costs like 50 cents. So it's yeah. like, what's wrong? Does with make you? It does make your hand hurt though. I, I've realized I don't do an awful lot of writing these days. And so when I actually write yeah. out a handwritten, I was like, oh my gosh, that really hurts. <laughs> I know it does. So what, what, yeah. one of the things uh, at the guy, um, Jocko Willink actually really put it really interestingly. Uh, he was talking with Brian Buffini on a, on a podcast once and, and Jocko Willink said, he's like, uh, two notes a day is what Brian Buffini proposed. And, and Jocko was like, Oh, wow. 
that's a big ask. And it, it's not that it's a hard, it's not that it's hard to write two personal notes a day. It's that yeah. it's easier not to. And that's yeah. why people do it. And so that was the yeah. big mind grenade uh, there. Yeah. Fantastic. Hey, um, I always ask my guests, you know, what are their professional and personal best? And I mean, obviously getting in the top 10% of real estate agents in, in, in the US is pretty special, but what are you most proud of in your life so far? Uh, that's pretty cool with the real estate stuff. Um, for me, yeah. I, I don't, I don't, uh, I think for me, I, I haven't really reached my personal best yet. I, I'm, I, I look back on my real estate career and I'm not like nothing like, I, and this is maybe just me being super high standards. I like look <laughs> back and I'm just like, there's nothing that like really blows me out of the water, me personally. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm just like, all right, well, you know, just a regular real estate agent. I don't know why, you know, I don't, don't think it was all that crazy. Uh, personally, I think I'm really proud of is, you know, I have a two and a half year old son and a eight month old son. I'm really proud of those guys. And it's really cool mm-hmm. um, yeah. to be able to, and my goal that I actually set 10 years ago was that I wanted to be a present father in my kid's life, the way my father was present in my life. And the fact that mm-hmm. I've been able to do that for the last two and a half years for the firstborn and eight months for the, the second guy. Uh, mm-hmm. I love that I've been able to do that. So I'm actually kind of living that dream now that, cause and mm-hmm. I set that 10 years ago before I had even, I think I had just met my wife at the time. So like, mm-hmm. like they were these, this was a goal set a long time ago and it's finally being able to realize it is really cool. Yeah, no, that is awesome. And I think that, you know, I see that people when they go into business, they often kind of go into business thinking they're going to get all this freedom, all this extra time, they're going to spend time with their kids. And of course, they get bogged down in the day to day stuff and suddenly they're working ridiculous hours and, and not really living the life they want to. So it's really Correct. cool to see that you've, um, you've committed to that. And obviously, your father set a good um, benchmark, if you like, in terms of being there for you. Yeah. So he, he was a, my mom was a business owner and my dad oh, yeah. actually ended up quitting his job and working for my mom. So, oh. uh, so he, uh, obviously they were around a lot and that's, I think yeah. that was a big deal because I know my wife's father, uh, he was a car salesman and was not around a, a lot because he was always mm-hmm. working late. And she told me that, you know, she only really got to see him on like Sundays and yeah. she told, she, you know, she's always told me, she's like, I really wish that I had my dad around as much as you had yours around. That was a really cool thing. So I'm like, well, okay, well, then our guys got to have me around. <laughs> so we got to make sure that happens. <laughs> yeah. And, and you know, the, the, the business that you have, the appreciation of the company, it's not a small business, right? We're, t- we're looking at potentially turning over seven figures this year. So it's, yeah, not as if is... it's a little, it's not a tin pot sort of, you know, running from the back of the house type business. So tell not me how that. you balance that, you know, in terms of building the business and having time for the family. Yeah. Uh, having systems in place, uh, is really, really important. Uh, making sure that there is a, a system and sometimes you don't know what the system is until you go through it once or twice. Sometimes there's, Mm -hmm. there's been a lot of things that I've done in both real estate and with appreciation advocate where, uh, you don't even know what problems you're going to come across until you actually go through the exercise or the, the, the project once. Um, Mm -hmm. and then after a while you start to be like, okay, there's just, this is how this is going to go. Okay. Now we need somebody to do this, this, and this, and that's just going to, and then you start to build systems around that and you start to outsource what tasks, um, are, what tasks are outsourceable. And then you start putting Mm -hmm. those together and it basically, um, it's kind of like, uh, you know, E-Myth Revisited. You ever read that book? Yeah. Yes, absolutely. That, yep. Yeah. So that's basically, uh, like, you know, start working on the business and it's long, yeah. the more time you spend working on it, the less time you'll have, the less time you'll have to be in it and then, mm-hmm. and it, try to basically make it run itself. So like you have like people that you hire, you want to hire slow and fire fast. Like you don't want to make sure you, you know, you have high quality people and that, and also people that believe in the vision that you set out for the company and that's mm-hmm. important too. So like people who, you know, don't care. Like for me, I'm a big, big, big gratitude guy. Obviously I'm yeah. a gift giving guy. Yes. So, <laughs> yeah. um, and my freaking company is called appreciation advocate. <laughs> so like, so like, <laughs> yeah. uh, so of course I, I would want people working here that have that same value system. Like I'm not, you mm-hmm. know, people that don't care about what others who are only in it for themselves are not going to do well here. Yeah. Uh, narcissism is not going to do well here. So like, that's why, <laughs> uh, you know, people who are, who share that mission and that same core value is, is, um, when those all align, everyone's on the same page. They all have the same vision. They all have the same drivers in them. That that's a super helpful thing too. Yeah, that's one of the things we teach in the US is you know you, you really want the right people who share those core values, who share your your purpose, who want to be on that journey with you, um, in the right seats, doing the right jobs, so they can actually do the jobs that they have, have been given to do. Yeah. Yes. 
Okay. So process is a really interesting one, isn't it? Because I know that a lot of entrepreneurs, when they start a business, they go, oh, but it's just so much easier to do it myself, you know, mm. um, to try and teach somebody. It's, it's really hard. And I always um, joke about the whole, there's delegation and there's abdication. And I think I'm usually quite good I at see. abdicating. Like, I don't want to do that. You just sort it all out, which is really not very fair because you're not giving the Head people the a chance. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Whereas <laughs> delegation is about recognizing this is not the good use of your time, but developing um, the systems and process of somebody else who can actually take it, whether it's outsourced or internally. How how did you do that in your business? Yeah, uh, kind of a clever little. Uh, remember when I said I was a numbers guy? So this is how yeah, I did yeah. it. <laughs> so yeah, this good. Is I'm dying to hear it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So basically, what I did is I calculated the dollar value of what my time is worth, and every time yeah. every time I spent an hour on something, I realized that's what it cost me to do that. So yeah. I think at the time I did that, my time was like thirteen hundred dollars an hour at the time, and yeah. it was like okay, if I spend an hour, you know, doing laundry. Um, it was that was thirteen hundred dollars to do laundry, versus it's expensive uh, washing, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. I mean, we have this. We have a, a company here that call it. They 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 do. If you sign up, they come pick up your laundry and then they bring it back tomorrow. It costs like thirty to sixty dollars. So I'm like, okay, well that's a lot cheaper than thirteen hundred. So go. So like yep. you start outsourcing these things. Um, yeah. Even even there's a Instacart, which is a great company. I don't know if they have it where you guys are, but Instacart no, is what basically. Is that? Uh, so Instacart is they do your food shopping for you. So like they, they and they, yeah. they just show up at your door with all your groceries and they drop it off and you pay them like a like the driver a tip or whatever for and a yeah. sh for shopping for you. So um, I don't have to do any of that stuff. Like mm -hmm. uh, I, the the, door, the groceries just show up. Like all of the things you can just slowly start to cut those things out. So uh, the dollar value of your time and then also yep. the, the the dollar value of your assistance time. So think about this. Like if let's just keep it an even even number. If your time is worth two thousand dollars an hour. Yep. And you're paying your assistant, let's say thirty dollars an hour. Uh, mm -hmm. Don't don't put your assistant on completely menial things too. So, like uh, for me, one of the biggest objections when someone talks to me, they always say, "Well, Steve, I don't need you to to do it for me. I'll have my assistant do it in house." And I'm like, "That's fine. That's cool." Um, now, don't forget. Yes, you're paying your assistant thirty dollars an hour, or whatever. But what is your assistant's worth? Your assistant's time worth to you? Because mm -hmm. it's actually saving you two thousand dollars. So it's actually worth nineteen hundred and seventy dollars. To, mm -hmm. to put your assistant on there. So to you and then over and our average campaign sometimes can take up to 170 hours to complete. So wow. if you translate that into assistant hours, that's 22 working days of the, of the month. And that's mm -hmm. basically a whole month. So basically what you're saying is you're going to commit one month's time of your assistance time to this when they should be doing all of the other things that run your business. Yeah. <laughs> so that's basically and that's, that's, Yeah. That's great. I love those numbers. It's really interesting that often when I work with business owners, I actually say, you know, what do you think your hourly rate is? They often underestimate. They kind of go, oh, probably a couple of hundred dollars. You go, no, mm -hmm. you're the owner of this business. You know, you're easily at seven or eight hundred, um, potentially more. But like, don't undervalue yourself because if you're doing the stuff that is actually really adding value, think about the number of years of experience you've got, the way that you can do things really quickly that other people will take time to do. And I have to kind of get people to think about what are they really worth? Yeah. And once you, but once you know, it, it's, it's yeah. big time. Like you, then yeah. it's like, Oh, you start thinking about things totally different when there's a dollar amount on it. It's like, Whoa, yeah. okay. <laughs> let's, how do we change things? It's funny because I was having this conversation with my husband. So my husband's an actuary, so he's a real numbers guy, right? Oh, so, so he's he is, Mr. Yeah. Real Numbers. Okay, he's Captain yeah. Numbers. <laughs> but, but he's also, if you can imagine, you know, you've got an entrepreneur like myself and an actuary. We're kind of at the opposite scales for taking risks, for spending money. And and, yes. and so we get, our, we get our dog food delivered. We've got two little um, mini schnauzers and they get raw food and we get it delivered. And the other day he went, oh, it's costing $10 to get the dog food delivered. We need to stop doing that and go and pick it up. And I went... Uh -uh. If you work out my hourly rate, that having that stuff delivered for ten dollars is an absolute no brainer. Just steal, um, but, yeah, yeah, absolute steal. But he couldn't quite get his head around it. So still working on that at the moment. He said, "Well, I can do it because I'm on a salary, so it doesn't matter if I go and take the time to do it." I said, "But it's not just the actual um, amount of your 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 salary or your hourly rate. But what about the time? Couldn't you spend that half an hour to an hour yep. doing something that you enjoy more? Because it's not always about earning more money. But he loves music, so imagine like you have an extra hour to go and do something new." Musical, as opposed to picking up the dog food, that makes sense yeah. to me. <laughs> yeah, essentially, what you're doing is paying ten dollars to get an hour of your time to enjoy music. Yeah. Like, yeah. I yeah. think, like most people would pay ten dollars. They would pay hundds of dollars to go to a concert. Yeah, yeah. You, all you do have to do now is pay ten. <laughs> that's an easy. That's <laughs> yeah. an easy exchange. <laughs>
<laughs> yeah. So I think we've got to look at both the money side, but also the opportunity cost. Because I mean, I, 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 same sort of thing with a cleaner at home. It's like actually, first of all, from a money perspective, it's an absolute no brainer. I'm not spending three hours cleaning my house every week when somebody else can do it for yeah. a fraction of the cost. But yeah. it also gives me three hours of my time at, for me. So even though it's on the weekend and it's not, a, I can't use that time of my work, I get to use it for me and the stuff that I really enjoy outside of work. So that's, yeah. again, a no brainer. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so you've obviously learned a lot, um, I, I would imagine, both through your real estate business, but also through running the Appreciate, Appreciation Advocate about the, the psychology and the philosophy of gifting and gratitude. And tell us a little bit about what you've learned in that time. Ah, so fun stuff. So actually in the yeah. term, in the, uh, in the spirit of giving gifts, uh, it's a big thing where there's three really, really dangerous secrets uh, that deceive you in the gift giving world. And, okay. Uh, yeah, so there, that that's a pretty fun thing. So, uh, the 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 gifting secrets that I'll that I'll tell you basically, there's the first big problem is that most client appreciation gifts, events, swag, all that stuff, they only make one impression. So, as a marketing expert, we we want we all right. Let's put it this way: if I went into your business and I told you, uh, you you know, maybe you just took out a client to dinner and it cost you two hundred dollars. Mm-hmm. Yep. I'd say, okay, that's one impression. You just pay $200 for one impression. If I went into a marketing or agency and said, hey, I'd like to work here, I can get you one impression for $200. They'd say, $200 for one impression? Get the hell out of here. <laughs> like, <laughs> they're like, you ain't coming here. <laughs> so yeah. uh, they would never give me a job for that. So, But people do it. They take people to dinner. They pay them out to golf or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, and you, so here's the thing. As a marketing expert, you or your goal is to stay top of mind as long as possible. Mm-hmm. And you can't do that with one impression. So that's the that's the first problem with most client appreciation gifts, um, yeah. if they're doing it at all. Um, now, <laughs> yes. the second big problem of the three is that uh, that one impression is usually neutral or negative, which means like so basically it's a one off. It's like a lazy gift. It's a flat out yep. bad gift that not only it doesn't keep you top of mind, but it also hurts your repu- reputation. So like if you have uh, in the minds of the customer. So like let's say you have a like maybe you're one of our clients. We have. A lot of coaches who who like to give gifts to their top coaching clients. Mm-hmm. Um, these coaches, what they'll do is uh, instead of like before they get to us, they they give their this one guy has a client who pays him fifty thousand dollars a year, and yeah. I, and he sends him a, a fifty dollar gift card. I'm like, dude, I know they're probably and that leads us right into your third problem is that people lie about the real feelings regarding the gift. It's like no one's ever going to tell you that your gift sucks as a courtesy. Just so, <laughs> so unfortunately, the bad gifts receive the same feedback that only the good gifts should get. So because of this, the cycle of the bad gift giving death cycle continues, and no mm-hmm. one's going to say, you know what, hey Steve, you know what, this gift sucks. You can shove this up your, you know what, like take that home. <laughs> like no one's going to say that. So, but yep. also like so, if you if you give these 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 bad gifts, they. If, you know, you're giving fifty dollars to a fifty thousand dollar per year client. Yeah, they'll say, "Oh, this is so nice. Thank you. Uh, appreciate it. You shouldn't have, uh, but you really shouldn't have because <laughs> <laughs> because they're going to turn around and regift it if it's a gift card, yeah. uh, it, and it doesn't stick around. So, like, obviously, to to do better with the the appreciation stuff is you have to kind of treat the gift as a as a symbol of the relationship. So if you're if you don't take the the, the gift and like essentially, if you give them a gift card, you're basically telling yep. them you're too lazy. I'm too lazy to care if I can put any time into you. So here's gift card. It's like patting them on the head and saying, all right, Junior, run along. Go get yourself something nice. That's kind of what you're saying yeah. but yep. without saying it. So that's why you want to uh, get something that's going to stay in the house longer. It's going to have some staying power. It's going to be a quality item, something they hang up. Like when I was in real estate, I used to give people uh, watercolor paintings of their house. That they oh, every nice. time I go after they bought the house, I was like, "Hey, here's a watercolor painting of the house you just bought. Congratulations on your first home, whatever." Hmm. And then you can continue with other gifts after that. But that was kind of the the first one, and people would appreciate that because mm-hmm. and they'd hang it up and it would stay, and they'd think about me, and I'd make impression after impression, day after day after day, every time they look at the painting on the wall. I love that. And I suppose that comes down to I mean, a lot of people um, really want to get their brand out there. So when they're doing promotional uh, gifts, it's all about getting a logo on there. But in actual fact, you've just given a classic example of where you don't need it because they will remember that um, picture for about that came from you for the rest of their lives. <laughs> right. Well, it's about them. So that's the thing. So mm. that's the next big thing is that's promotion versus gift. So mm. a promotion is about the giver, which has got yep. stuff. It's got your logo on it, stuff that's pretty much cheap. 
<laughs> and bulk item. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but, yep. but, but when you're giving a gift, it should always be about the receiver. Your logo mm -hmm. should not be on a gift for the receiver. If I gave you a cutting board that said like Remax all over it, you'd be like, all right, <laughs> cool, but no thanks. But Never going to use it. Yeah, yeah no <laughs> thanks. I don't want to see your freaking name and phone number on my freaking cutting board. Uh, <laughs> what people, what, what I did do is I did, when I did get cutting boards, I did spend a little bit extra money on them to, mm -hmm. to get them engraved with a monogram. And I would have their last name under the monogram. And then I'd have the address of the house they bought. And then I'd have the date they bought the house all engraved in this beautiful cutting <sighs> board. And they were like, I don't ever want to cut on this ever. I'm going to hang this up because it's so beautiful. <laughs> and they, yeah. they, they, I've gotten text messages about them. They're like, this is the nicest cutting board I've ever seen. I'm going to keep this. I'm like, they, then they, they, they like make it a decorative item in their house. And now they're, yeah. I, so we call it attacking the kitchen mm -hmm. because we as human beings spend the most time in the kitchen. So whenever you're giving, mm -hmm. I just want to uh, fill the kitchen with a bunch of stuff. And that's stuff that they're going to use stuff that that's just nice. It's decorative. It's, it's pleasant on the eyes. It's, uh, and it's functional. Yeah, it's high quality. So anytime they pick up anything, oh, the ice cream scooper or the pizza slicer or the knife, nut, custom knife set or the scissors or whatever it is, oh, my realtor gave me that. My realtor gave me that. My realtor gave me that. Like you can't go in your house without thinking of me all the time. <laughs> <laughs> so that's basically <laughs> the whole goal. Every time you I touch something it. in your kitchen, it's me. <laughs> yeah. So now I'm really intrigued, and, I, I, and don't give away your secret sauce per se, but if you like, it's if you're working for, when you're doing it yourself, you know your customers really, really well. And so you know what, they, what their house is like, you know what their kitchen is like, you know what you can buy. You can even decide where the painting's going to go on the wall, for example. But if you're doing it for other people, how do you get that level of understanding of their clients so you can actually get gifts that are appropriate? Yeah. So for me in real estate, it was, I was, I'll be honest, I was a little spoiled because I got to tour homes with them and I got mm -hmm. to get to know them. And I imagine it's probably the same for a financial advisor where you get to know them a little bit more. You get to kind of, obviously you're knowing their personal finances. That's like really yeah. private information. So like you get that kind of a, a relationship. Um, so what we call it here in our, and this is for every small business owner to implement is we call it collecting the juice and we call it juice because whenever you gossip about someone, you're, that's the juicy stuff. Everyone always wants yeah. to know what the juicy information is. So like uh, whenever people talk, uh, they spill juice all the time, all the time. Like, for example, uh, you've done it a, a, a ton already. Like you've already told me you have two schnauzers, your husband's into music. And like yep. you've, you've already spilled a, a, a variety of other things that I could totally take advantage of and start gifting you based on the things you've said. So like that's the, mm -hmm. the juice collection. Like it's called – it's like it's like a really active layered listening. So you have to listen like several layers deep. And if you can't mm – -hmm. Like you really, and it's a learned skill. It's not, I, uh, I have a little bit of a natural talent for it because I'm more of an introvert and I don't like to talk. So I always yeah. ask open-ended questions because I'd rather listen to you talk than have me speak. <laughs> so like, that's why uh, uh, for me, it's easy. Like, okay, cool. And every time they say something, the way I, the way I taught the skill to a couple other people I work with is I said, just picture everybody as a, a, a new adventure. And like, what does that adventure look like? Like, we'll learn about what kind of an adventure you can go on by just getting to know what that person's story is. Because everybody is a, really a walking story. And it's mm -hmm. like, well, it's like I go to a wedding. I didn't know anybody there except my wife. And my wife was in the wedding, so I was literally stuck by myself. <laughs> so, uh, so I'm like, all right, well, let's – Mr. Introvert's got to walk up to people here and figure out how the heck I'm going to have somebody to talk to and not look like a – like a little dog in the corner over here by myself. So I started yes. asking people like open-ended questions. Hey man, what do you do for your living? He's like, Oh, I'm a cop. I'm like, well, that's cool. What's the craziest story you've ever seen? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then you start going down this line. And then the guy actually at some point does tell you like, Hey, he actually leaned over and said, like, hey, look, man, a lot of people do a lot of like surface level bull crap. And obviously he's retired at military as well. So he's saying this yeah. with a lot more swear words, <laughs> but like, uh, so he's like, but I really appreciate the fact that you actually do care. I can tell you actually care and you're interested in my story. And like, it's really cool that to actually talk to somebody. So, you know, let's go get some beers together. I'm like, yes, I ate a friend. <laughs> <laughs> as long as it's craft beer, right? <laughs> yes, right. Exactly. As long as, see, yeah. see, I'm spill, so I spilled some juice already. See, so now, you know, I mm -hmm. like craft beer and hydrofoiling and all those other cool yeah, things. Yeah. yeah, that's really cool. I just, I have to just share a little funny story. So like I said, my husband's an actuary. We actually met on a sort of a, an online dating site. And so our first date was when we went out to dinner together. And I'm a bit like you. I love asking open-ended questions. I love finding out about people. I genuinely love people. And so we went to this dinner. We spent about two hours. I asked every single open-ended question I could 
could think of to try and get through, you know, get some understanding of him. And I swear he's the only person I know who can answer open-ended questions with one or two word answers. Damn. So the whole evening <laughs> it was like, so, so I understand you love photography. He's like, yeah. So tell me about the photography you do. Landscapes. Oh, so what kind of landscapes do you enjoy? And just oh, landscapes. That's torturous. <laughs> I know. And so we, we and, and obviously we're married now, so it worked out in the end. But <laughs> I, 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 how? <laughs> <laughs> it turns out he was a little bit nervous um, the first date. He had Googled me, which you should never do um, when you're about to meet somebody. So he Googled me and seen all this stuff and so was absolutely petrified of, of the presence that I had and how he would talk to me. The second date, he had calmed down a wee bit and we just talked for hours and it was great. But, yeah, I've never, ever met somebody who could answer open-ended questions with one or two word answers. <laughs> that is that is my death knell right there. I could, I, I, like, I was, before I met my wife, I, anytime I talked to a woman that was – one word answer. I was like, yeah, no, no, nope, no, yeah. no, nope. no, nope. nope. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Off the list. Um, I, I, I think to be fair, um, at the end of the, the date, I was like, that's it. I never want to see this guy again. I hope he that's doesn't ask think. for a second date. Yep, yep. And he asked for a second date, and of course, every uh, inch of my body was screaming, no, no, don't do this, Deborah. But I'm British, so I just say, oh yes, that would be lovely. Please do call me. <laughs> oh my god. Well, and, thank, and thank goodness that I did. Otherwise, you know, yeah, I wouldn't seriously. have um, discovered the real side of him. But yeah, somebody <laughs> was was screaming to get after him again. That's yeah, good. yeah, absolutely. <laughs> okay, so yeah, so you got to look for the juice. Um, talk to people. Really talk with yeah. the, with the intention of understanding, not not because you want to answer them, but because you actually genuinely want to find out more about them. And yeah. then you can start to build a, a profile of the person and know who they are and and gift appropriately. So with your with your team that does this for other people. So how do you? They can get the juice if you like. Do they feed that juice into you, and then you find a yeah. gift that is appropriate? Yeah. yeah. So like if like if you were a coach and you had a like, I don't know, a retreat, maybe you do two retreats a year um, and yep. you bring your top 10 people or whatever. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'd be like, OK, who are your top 10 people? What are their names? What are their spouses names? What are their dogs names or kids names or pets names? Uh, yep. What like what kind of pets are they? What kind of dogs are they? Uh, what 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 are their occupations? Why are they in your coaching program? Uh, what are their goals? Uh, do you have any inside jokes with any of these people that I should know about? What is there any kind of common quote that you have that's that the group would know about? Or like what yeah. what do these people do? Like everything I want about these people uh, that I want to know, I should know, I I want to know everything that I can. Um, mm-hmm. And and if you can't provide that information, this person is probably not a top mm. twenty five or so. So that's a good yeah. way to disqualify people. Like if you can't answer these questions, it's like, oh, well, maybe I don't know these people. And if you don't have anyone in your database that you can answer those questions for, then then now it's, an, now it's a good reason for you to get up off your butt and start getting to know people more. It's like, wow, I really don't know my database. And this is mm-hmm. evidence of that. And I should uh, the reason I'm not getting referrals is because I don't know as much about them as I thought I did. And then you get to start reaching out. You start connecting with them, start taking a few of them out to lunch. And it, yes, I know I don't usually tell people to go out to lunch because it is only one impression. I, I, I don't yeah. like to do that. But it's but building a relationship, sometimes it does require that kind of thing until you get mm-hmm. to know them a little bit better. And then um, you can start doing like the gifting and things like that and building those relationships. But, you know, breaking bread with people is a good way to to long term to establish that foundational relationship it does you you can have a relationship with somebody but that after you break bread with them it actually totally changes the dynamic of the relationship because you've sat down you've hung out with them you've gotten to know them on a deeper level you've basically broken through that next layer of uh, it's not it's no longer a quote-unquote inch deep relationship it's now um you know, I guess a yard. A significant more. relationship. Yeah, yeah, it's something more than that. Sorry, I know I'm on the imperial system. I know you guys are probably metric system, but whatever the heck. <laughs> a, a, what is it, a centimeter or whatever? Centimeter, but, <laughs> but you know, it's really funny. I, I, this always fascinates me because I'm British and I now live in New Zealand and we're, we're very much metric. But we talk about everything in sort of, yeah, kilometers, centimeters, meters, except yeah, for that. height. I still call myself five foot three and a half. So I don't That's... actually understand why. You know. And you think we're messed up. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah. Actually, I went to Canada just recently and it's even more confusing over there but anyway <laughs> oh well <yeesh. laughs> mm, yeah <laughs> okay cool so um if for the people that are listening in what would be your kind of top three tips to start to really you know get a sense of who your customers are what you could how you could look after them i don't know just just three top tips that they can take away and put into practice i guess so uh i'll actually give you six because i have a okay. i have like a, a plan for that so basically what okay. i'll do and i don't fly through them because I, I don't want to suck up the entire night on talking about <laughs> just these things. But basically what I would do is you want to rank your database, basically you mm-hmm. A plus A, B, C, and Ds. Uh, and then you want to determine a budget, like how much do you want to spend on these people um, over the course of the year to appreciate them. 
Uh, and when I say these can the I just ask, yeah, can I just ask, yeah, can I ask a question here? Because I think that, again, people kind of can be a bit stingy on this. And, and I think you gave a really good example. You know, when a client is worth $50,000 to you, $50 is just not appropriate. Um how do they? How do you work out what? I mean, I, I tend to be quite generous, so it, for me, it's, it's quite easy. But for people who maybe aren't used to this, how would they work out what's an appropriate amount? Yeah, five to ten percent of your net income from that client. Okay, cool. So if it's a fifty thousand yep. dollar client, then you know whatever five percent of that's five thousand. Yep. Right? No, that's ten percent. No, that's ten percent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, I get it. yeah. yeah, that's ten percent. Yeah, where's your husband at? We need some No, where's your husband? Where's your husband at? We need the numbers. <laughs> Uh, no, we have uh, yeah. So basically, you spend about twenty five hundred to five thousand dollars on that client over the course of twelve yep. months, over the yes. course of the year. So they, okay. you can spread that out however you want to do it. Uh, you could do twelve hundred fifty dollars per every six months, or you could do mm -hmm. twenty five hundred dollars every six months. Whatever you want to do, yep. uh, that's how you spread that out. And then the people okay. you're doing the gifting for is your top ten to twenty percent. You're not doing mm -hmm. it for your entire database. That's why you need to rank them <laughs> because you, yes. need to work, you need to focus the, the gifting and the appreciation on the A's and the A pluses first. And if you get mm -hmm. through them and then you go to the B's and, and if you get through the B's, you get to the C's. But you should you should never really have enough time to get to C. You know, A's and A pluses should hit be done 1,000%. Maybe you get to a few B's, but that's yeah. kind of normally where I, I see things most effective. Perfect. Um, yep. So there's rank your database, determine a budget, determine a budget. Yep. Uh, build a random timeline. And by random, like when you do appreciate on people, don't send them gifts in December when everybody else is giving gifts. No. Uh, you I won't stand do. out. And as marketing experts, you know, hey, we're supposed to make you stand out. So we're not going to send you. <laughs> we literally won't send gifts in December. So we kind of just do planning in December. We don't do actual gift sending. Uh, mm -hmm. So we'll do that. Uh, send it in like, you know, March 24th or something. <laughs> like yep. some Something random really day. random. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, so build out a random timeline for yourself. I mean, depend on how many times you want to do gifts, two to four times a year. So however, mm -hmm. pick those dates. Um, and then have a gift list. What do you want to send them? Build out your plan. What? Do you, uh, and then <laughs> know the juice was the one we already went over. And then yep. lastly, put a handwritten note on it. A handwritten note goes with every gift. It should always be with every gift. It, should, it adds a level of personalization that uh, I can't really be spoken for. Sure. So now again, I'm being curious. So um, in terms of when you're doing it for other people, how do you get those handwritten notes? Are you actually asking the client to do those handwritten notes or? Uh, no, we, did, they... we can do them. We write them. You can do them. Yeah. Yeah. We write was... them. And if we have to do like a massive order, we have, we have a little bit of help with a, a vendor that we work with, but most yeah. of the time we can just write them in house because a lot of people yeah. focus they're, they're They may have two or 300 clients, but you know, top 20% of that, it's only 20 or 40 people. Like you yeah. can, we can write 40 notes. Easily 100 notes. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah. I actually went over to a client's place the other day, and they have a they have a, a business that basically packs up coffee pods. You know how you've got your Nespresso machines with the little coffee pods? Yeah, yeah, they yeah. pack They pack them up, and they, they actually put a handwritten note into every single one. But what they've actually done is they've taken a, um, a, a, a sort of a, a robot, and they've taught it how to – they've put in like a, a, a handwritten program, and it actually physically has a pen, and it writes in handwriting I've on the – the paper and I was like wow that's actually quite cool because people think it genuinely is a handwritten note it, it, it yeah. isn't um but it it, it kind of it's, is. <laughs> it's actually a pen though it's actually a it real a pen, pen that's right yeah not not just a printed thing yeah and so and, and when you use a real pen of course you get those things that you get when you write with a pen where it's not absolutely consistent and um you know sometimes the ink doesn't quite go flow as smooth as it should do so it actually yes. looks like somebody has handwritten it yeah yeah it's good I, I've seen that before yeah. I yeah, I, yeah. I've, I've looked at it a couple times I was like well that's interesting it looks really good and, and like because you can tell when it's like printed on like if it was like yeah, somebody absolutely. printed like a script it's like oh, yeah this was actually handwritten yeah, yeah, but, yeah. But okay. when it's actually oh, cool. written with a pen, that's yeah. it's like, oh, wow. It's, this it's getting actually, close, isn't it? Yeah. yeah it's like, wow, <laughs> we are really getting replaced as human beings on this earth. <laughs> So I think no, over. no, we're just be, we're just being elevated to a, a greater um, sure. value of, of activity. I would hope, but yeah, but I still think handwritten notes. I I wrote about them handwriting Christmas cards a few years ago and for the local paper, and it was just like, yeah, I I didn't get any. Hand, I got no Christmas cards this year. It's so weird, and yet, wow, uh, if I had 50. got a handwritten, did you? I didn't. I know it's like I would have loved to have got one. That would have uh, made my my day. You know. <laughs> wow, like yeah, like hmm. well, that's why we don't send them in December though, because like I had like fifty. If you sent me a card, yeah. I would have been like, oh, whatever throw it in with the rest of them yeah i got lots of presents at christmas time that they didn't necessarily see i didn't get any presents <laughs> <laughs> i had to get myself got, something yeah. i had to buy myself them. <laughs> so i got the cards uh, you got the presents yeah there you go we got a good, good, good thing They're cool okay so um now tell me a little bit about your business then so tell people about the uh you know, the business that you're running and how they can get hold of you how they can pick your brains sure yeah so basically what we do is we uh put together a 
some people like want to have their we put together a gifting plan for people and mm -hmm. we can give them the plan and then if they want they can do it in-house and execute the plan it's a proven plan it'll work uh in, yeah. in generating more referrals and and keep uh you can use it for clients for generating referrals increasing customer loyalty you can use it for uh employees in, uh, increasing employee loyalty and to try to keep retaining top talent you could do it that way too uh mm -hmm. however you want to use it we'll give you a proven plan that works uh and everybody it'll be custom to you so everybody has a different business uh and or if you don't want to do it you're in-house then you can buy the buy the plan and pay us to do it for you and so that's, that's the other way yeah so like yeah. that'll save you some time too so uh and it's not i'll be honest with you it's it's not much more to, to have us do it for you i mean we, my whole goal when i started the company was i wanted to be accessible to small business owners so i wanted to make sure that my service never costs more than a part-time assistant part-time okay. not a full not a full-time yeah. assistant a part-time yeah, yeah. <laughs> so uh we we are not crazy expensive we are not a bank breaking service to work with <laughs> so oh, um but yeah but in order to get in touch with me if you want to learn more about it just email me that's the best way to go i do check it multiple times a day so uh you can send me an email at steve at appreciationadvocate.com mm, beautiful and that appreciate appreciationadvocate.com is where the website is as well um so you can mm -hmm. find out more information there yeah great yes. um Wow. <laughs> I've actually taken copious notes, as you probably saw. I, I always love, I love doing these podcasts because I think nice. that I always get to learn some stuff myself and you give me some great ideas. So thank you so much for, for giving your time and giving your, your information so freely. Really, really appreciate it. Anytime. Um, yeah. And uh, yeah, please pet, send more, send more handwritten notes as my plea to everybody. I just think it is such a, it's so yes. lovely to actually get something. And as you said, it, it just, it feels like the person's actually taken the time, which I think is worth more than anything these days. Yes. I mean, it's exciting. You're just like, oh, wow, somebody yeah. sent me something. Even yeah, if it is yeah. just a note, it's like, cool, yeah. somebody sent me something. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Hey, Steve, thank you so much for your time. Really, really appreciate it. Um, look forward to um, taking a good look through your site and seeing what you're up to and, and maybe even, yeah, doing some business together in the future. No problem. Anytime. Always oh, here for you. Thank you. Great. Awesome. 